Good morning, my name is Mackenzie Gray and today I'll be dis discussing what I've researched so far throughout ISM as well as my original work. So I'm just going to start off saying a little bit about me. I'm currently a senior here at Frisco High School. I'm 17 years old. I'm the youngest of an older brother. His name is Michael, he's 22 and he lives in California. I'm the senior class treasurer. I'm involved in NHS and USITT. This is my first year of being an ISM and I'm a huge Cowboys fan. To remember who you are, you need to forget who they told you to be. This quote not only gets me through every day, but it has really helped me throughout my ISM journey so far. Entering ISM, I had the mindset of having a mentor who was a physician because being, a, being in a household with my mother who is a superior figure and is also a pharmaceutical sales representative, she told me that I have to become a physician to live my life with complete satisfaction and to be financially stable. Well, after interviewing four physician assistants and one physician, I've kind of rerouted my way and I'm going the route of being a physician assistant in dermatology. And breaking this down to her was not easy whatsoever. She yelled at me and bickered, but I had to explain to her that this is my life and I'm growing up and I need to make this decision for myself. And if at the end of the day I'm not happy with it, then she can tell me I told you so. But for right now, I just want to find out for myself. My mission is to seek a profession in dermatology. As a professional in this field, I plan to dedicate myself to my fullest potential and use my positive attitude and researching skills to help me achieve my dream. My objective is to specialize in the diagnosis of skin disorders. I plan to help individuals find treatments that are beneficial to their skin so they are more comfortable with their appearance. So with interviewing both physician and physician assistants, I kind of created like a pro-con chart um, being a PA, you have more flexible hours, quality patient time, less schooling, and you, you don't have that much responsibility on your plate. Whereas being a physician, there's a lot of more schooling because, of course, the salary. Um, you not only get to see patients, but you have a lot of paperwork out of the office and inside the office. And you have to worry about your patients, yourself, and your uh, faculty members. So it's just a lot of responsibility and I get stressed out easily and I have a lot of anxiety so that's another reason why I decided to be a physician assistant. So the first um, semester of ISM was dedicated on researching assessments and conducting informational interviews so I'm just going to go through the five that I interviewed. My first interview was with Dr. Karen Lund. She is a physician at Plano Dermatology this interview was very informative and I'm so happy that she was my first interviewee because she gave me a lot of information that helped me start out my research in dermatology. And what stood out to me the most about her was she said, I'm the type of person that would rather know a lot about a little bit than a lot about a lot. And this stood out to me because I'm the exact same way. Basically, it means that she's the type of person that would like to know a lot of information about one particular thing than a lot of information about a lot of things. And so that's what makes dermatology different from a lot of different occupations because your prime subject is the skin. My second interview was with Lainey Buck. She was the first physician assistant I interviewed. She works at Rogers Dermatolo Dermatology literally right up the street. She loves being active. Um, she loves her job because she's always on her feet. And at the time, she knew a lot of dermatologists that wanted to become a PA because they were experiencing um, lawsuits. So I don't know if she was joking about that, but that's what she just told me in the interview. I'm going to skip over my third interview and go with my fourth. Um, his name was Matt Bruno. He's a physician assistant at the Dermatology and Skin Cancer Surgery Center. He identifies himself as a problem solver. Um, I love this about him because it showed a great character. He said that he not only wants to help people uh, get over their skin condition, but help them be comfortable with their own skin. A lot of people that uh, experience skin conditions and skin disorders are really insecure about themselves, so he wants to put themselves out there. My fifth interview was with Leah Schiller. She's a physician assistant at Dermatology Consultants of Frisco. She is very content with her choice of occupation. She loves how her um, hours are constant. She works the same hours Monday through Friday. She gets her weekends off and she loves to spend time with like her girlfriends and stuff and go out. So that's why she loves her job. And I asked her how she tends to stay emotionally stable 
when conducting her job because of the like skin conditions and she says that she forms a boundary between her and the patient and she understands that she cannot fix everything. So to my third interviewee, um, her name is Holly Glover and she's my current mentor. I'm just so content with my choice and I'm so happy that she agreed to be my mentor. She's also a physician assistant at Dermatology Consultants of Frisco. What made her different from a lot of the other interviewees was that she was so engaged the whole interview. She not only answered my questions in full depth, but she asked me questions too, which I really liked. She was so friendly and understanding that I did not know about the dermatology field that well, so she like gave me a lot of uh, hints and tricks about it. She was real really inspirational. She gave me a lot of tips that will help me stand out from the other applicants to be in medical in a medical school. And our mentor visits are always so educational and fun. I've never sat down on a mentor visit and actually like did busy work or like helped her out with something. We're always on our feet seeing patients and I've never been uh, denied access into a patient's room. So like the nurses there and the physicians there are always so um, engage in what I'm doing and they just help me out when it comes to stuff like that. So for my original work I decided to do a patient profile over um, psoriasis, so a patient with psoriasis. Psoriasis is a skin disease marked by red itchy scaly patches. People who get psoriasis tend to have a blood relative who had psoriasis. There are multiple types of psoriasis but the main two are plaque and scalp. Psoriasis is not contagious. A lot of people think that it is because of the way it appears on the skin, but if you touch it, you will not get it. And while I was at a mentor visit, I normally see patients, at least one patient a day on my mentor visit who has psoriasis, and one of the patients actually let me feel it. So, I don't know, it was just like a great experience. So plaque psoriasis causes patches of raised reddish skin covered by silvery scales on the elbows, knees, and lower back, but it can occur anywhere on the skin. So, of course, the picture on the left is psoriasis on the elbows. That's kind of like a severe case, but the psoriasis on the right is the psoriasis on the knees. Scalp psoriasis is identical to plaque psoriasis, but scalp psoriasis tends to be very itchy. A lot of physicians misdiagnose this as dandruff because as the patient scratches their hair, it comes like as it comes off as flaky. So you have to be really critical when um, identifying these skin conditions. So the terms medical record, health record medical chart are used to describe the systematic documentation of a single patient's medical history and care across time within one particular health care provider's jurisdiction. Basically what this is saying is that each time you go into a facility or a doctor's office, your physician or physician assistant creates a profile for you, whether you're being a new patient or a current patient. This has all your background information, what's wrong with your skin, if you're on any medications, any health issues, it basically has everything. This is very critical to the derm field because you see a lot of patients and having um, an updated patient profile will really help you because as you see patients, you have to come back, update their chart and just go on like that. So it's very critical and that's why I wanted to do this for my original work. So this is my patient profile. I created it from a blank document. So this is the front portion. It has the background information and all the medical histories. And that's just the ending. And each section, I'm gonna go through it. It's just a little snip out of this um, picture. So patient background. My patient, her name was Brindley Hill. She's a 31-year-old female. And for my original work, I located uh, the logo for the practice, Dermatology Consultants. Uh, I created the um, background information to the 31-year-old female. Her birthday is December 19th, 1982. Uh, I created the, the account number, where she lives, her home phone number, the insurance, and the appointment facility. So each uh, patient chart, the dermatologist creates um, they follow a thing called SOAP note. That is an acronym for Subjective Objective Assessment and Plan. Um, the subjective selection is the history of the patient. It includes the HPI or history of present illness, a narrative of the complaint of the patient, 
past medical history, current medications, and a review of systems. So for Brindley, her reason for the appointment was she had a rash. The HPI states that she's a 31-year-old female with rashes on the elbows, knees, and scalp. Rash has been present for about four weeks. It's red, scaly, and itchy. Patient has tried hydrocortisone ointment with no relief, and she's here seeking evaluation. She's currently on no medication. She doesn't have any past medical histories. She denies past surgical histories. She doesn't have any family history documented. She does not smoke. And something that is very critical to the dermatology field is if a patient uses sunscreen. Every single time you go to a practice and they, uh, you see a dermatologist, they ask you, do you wear sunscreen regularly? This is because the dermatologist is, is looking for skin cancer melanoma. So in Brinley's case, she does use sunscreen regularly. She doesn't have any allergies. She denies past hospitalization. And the review of systems is that she doesn't have any joint pain and no other dermatology issues. You ask a person with rashes that look like um, psoriasis if they have joint pain because that's one of the uh, symptoms of having psoriasis. But in her case, she does not. The objective portion is the physical exam and data selection. For my examination for her, on the elbows and knees, she has patches of raised reddish skin covered by silvery scales. And on the scalp, it's an identical appearance to the elbows and knees, but a silvery white scale and red patches. The assessment is um, the assessment of the patient's problem. The first sentence always describes the patient's problem, and the second sentence is the identification of the skin condition. So the reason Brindley came in was because she doesn't have, a, or she has a rash, but it's unspecified. And I classified it as psoriasis because of the way it looks, the way um, she's describing it, and that her hydrocortisone ointment did not fix it. Okay, so the last section of the SOAP note is the plan. This is the plan for the patient based on the problems identified. So you always have to come up with a treatment or plan for each patient. You have to give the preventative medicine and you have to follow up. So the treatment states that the patient with plaque psoriasis BSA 1%, the patient was counseled extensively about the pathophysiology, chronic nature, and management of psoriasis. We discuss the psoriasis treatment ladder. We often start with a topical medication. That's just you apply the medication directly to your face. Then progress if needed, possible phototherapy, and lastly consi consider systemic agents, oral versus ejectable. The patient was prescribed topical steroids to the affected areas. So psoriasis cannot be um, cured at all. It can be treated. Sometimes psoriasis goes away, but it comes back. So that's one thing that I'm developing for my kind of product. I want to fit, figure out like if there's any way to cure it. But for the preventative medicine for Brindley, I prescribed her clobetasol ointment, 0.05%, applied to the elbows and knees twice daily, and then the clobetasol shampoo. She needs to wash her hair daily and leave in scalp five to 10 minutes before rinsing. And so since she is a first time patient, and this is a new skin condition. I want to see her up for a follow-up for a two-week reassessment. And this is critical because just to see if there's any uh, progression in her um, treatment. I really con enjoyed conducting this original work just because this was very critical for the um, dermatology field. And Every single time I go in for a mentor visit, Holly is constantly updating patients' profiles, and I would always ask her, like, what are you doing? How do you do that? But now that I've hit every single portion of the patient chart, I feel more engaged with her, and sometimes she lets me, like, kind of play around with it, and she always, like, quizzes me on the different sections and what I would do in this case. And so I'm really just happy that I decided to do this original work. Previously, I was going to do an experiment on my mom, but I didn't have a mentor at the time, and it was just gonna take a lot of effort, and I didn't have enough time to do that, but I'm really content with what I chose. Um, next fall, or this fall, I'm gonna attend the University of Oklahoma, and I'm gonna major in biology for my undergrad, and then after I graduate from OU, I plan to go to California and go to Loyola Marymount University. It's in Los Angeles, California, and I want to 
go to PA school there. And I'm just really excited about the rest of my ISM journey. And I'm really content with my mentor and everything that I've done so far. So thank you for listening to my presentation.